I'm Kavita Sidhu and welcome to another positively energizing episode of Sunrise to Health. So let's go and enjoy the beauty of life. Today, our lovely instructor Nini will be taking us through an exercise routine that would help us retain that inner beauty that we all possess. These exercises will help promote anti-aging and retain a youthful you. So why not, right? Because let's face it, all of us wish to remain young. I mean, it's not a crime and it's not about being vain. It's about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. After that, we will show you a breakfast recipe that is full of antioxidants and just great for your skin. Our coffee chat will be with Joanna So, and she'll be discussing about motivation and discipline in health and fitness. So that should be really interesting for us to reflect on how to cope and remain positive in life. So I hope you'll enjoy the show. Stay with us. And over to you, Nini. Thank you, Kavita. Good morning, I'm Nini. Today, we are going to do a facial massage to take a couple of years of our age from our face and a couple of stretches to delay the process of aging. We are going to begin by sitting comfortably and we're going to use our right hand and imagine as if we have a thread on our fingers and now let's purse our lips and imagine the thread is going around the mouth without moving the face nor rolling our eyes we are going to just pull that invisible thread to our right ear taking an inhale staying here for a couple of breaths at the fifth breath release your hand and relax your face you know you would have performed it correctly if you feel a light tingling sensation on the opposite corner of the mouth. Let's switch side, press the lips one more time. This time around, we're going to use our left hand. Use the invisible thread to wrap around the mouth, taking an inhale again. Be sure to not move the face. And from there, pull it to our left ear this time around. The eyes would follow. facial massage would have worked and moved every tiny muscle in the lower region of our facial area. Let's begin with our upper body and lower body stretch now. Let's stand up. Open our feet, three feet apart with both feet pointing straight forward. Petrina on my right will be demonstrating an easier version of this pose while Joanne and myself will be demonstrating the full pose. Placing our hands on our waist, opening our chest, inhale. And now exhale, we are going to just lower our hands to the floor and stack them under the shoulders. If you're just staying for the easier variation here, just staying here and look up. Otherwise, walk your hands in so that they become parallel with your feet. And on the next exhalation, bend the elbows and lower the crown of your head towards the floor. Staying here for five breaths and just let oxygen and fresh blood be supplied to the brain. This exercise would also work on delaying the process of having grey hair on our head. And at the fifth breath, we are going to slowly come back to the initial starting position. And for stability, hands on your waist, bend your knees a little bit to protect our lower back and stand up. For the next exercise, we are going to start by lowering ourselves on all fours with our palms and on our knees to the floor. Now, we're going to tuck our toes in and shape our body to look like an inverted V shape. Stay here for five breaths and 
If you're feeling more adventurous, try to raise your right leg up to the ceiling, pointing it and from there circling around the ankle to improve circulation on our feet. And from there, bend the leg. And now, look through the sky through your right arm. Staying here and enjoying the beautiful morning and the delicious stretch of having opened our thighs. And lower the leg down at the fifth breath. Let's switch side, taking an inhale again. And exhale, raise the left leg up. Let's just circle around the ankles for a while, moving, wriggling every toe. And from there, bend the leg. Feel a delicious opening on our left hip and look to the sky through our left arm. At the fifth breath, lower our foot down. Lower our knees down. Relax for a couple of breaths. And we are going to start with our final and last exercise for today by lying down. Fitrina is going to be showing the easier version of variation while Joanne and myself will be taking the full version. We are going to raise our legs up anyway, pointing our legs to the sky. And you can just stay here for a simpler version. Otherwise, use a little bit of rocking momentum as you exhale to spot the hands just under the bum and pointing the feet up to the sky. We're going to stay here a little bit longer for about 8 to 10 breaths. An ancient Asian tradition, this powerful stretch is also known as the queen of all stretching exercise. As it is not always that we lie down with our feet higher than our pelvis, pelvis higher than the heart, and the heart higher than the brain, so it reverses the whole process of blood circulation from our toes down to the brain, making ourselves feel young, look radiant, and stay youthful. After the 8th or 10th breath, slowly bring and lowering our vertebra down and down and down and lower the legs all the way down. Although our stretches today seem challenging, I invite you to bring out the daring child in us anyway who's always fearless, playful, and always discovering ways on how we can actually move our body. Have a wonderful day today. Joanna So, 
Thank you so much for coming to have this little chat with me. Um, Joanna is a fitness and wellness coach and our topic for today is on um, discipline and motivation in health and fitness. Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's really interesting. Um, so what do you think is the, is, um, the important points that people need to know when it comes to maintaining the discipline and motivation in, in a fitness plan? I think when it comes to having a fitness plan and to be able to maintain your motivation, first of all is you have to have a very clear goal. So for instance, when you want to, let's say, lose weight, what is it that, why is it that you want to lose weight? You can't just say because I want to look good. It has to go deeper than beyond the physical appearance. So you have to find the inner motivation that drives you. For instance, it can be that I want to lose weight and look good for my upcoming wedding and things like that. So that's the first step is to really identify the inner motivation that makes you or drives you to keep going. And then other factors would include um, getting support from your family members, your friends, or even an online network that you can be part of and things like that. Right. Yeah, so those are, um, I would say, a few things that you have to sort of like get clear and understand before going on a fitness journey. Right, so it makes it easier because then you can focus on that goal yeah. and, and it, it propels yeah. you to, exactly. to, to keep at it, right? So uh, why is it that we know? So, I mean, even I, I sometimes um, do that when I start on, on a fitness goal and then I drop out. So we have so many people joining the gyms, like they would go for the first two weeks and then not go for the whole year. So why does that happen? I mean, how can we... Um, um, help, do some, yeah, yeah, do something, something about it. I think a lot of the time, when it comes to people coming in and dropping out so regularly, is that they sort of like look at a really short-term goal. So what they want is, let's say, you know, I want to look good, lose weight in three months' time. And let's say if they achieve it within two or three months, then they're like, great, now I can sort of like go back to my old habits or old lifestyle. Right. But in fact, what we want to look at is, yes, it is important to have short-term goals so that you can con constantly chase your goals and achieve your goals. But what is more important is to build positive, healthy habits long-term. So it's not just a, in a, it's not just a case of where I'm doing my workout because I want to achieve this, I, I want to achieve that, yes, but you're doing your workout because it's part of your lifestyle. So when it comes to part of your lifestyle, those are habits and routine which we want to create and start doing on a daily basis for long term and basically for the rest of our life. So you're saying that we should have like short term goals? Yes. And but an long overall term long term yes. goals? Yeah. Okay. So I can give, give you a really good example. Okay. Whenever someone wants to you know, get healthy and lose weight and things like that, they think that if they are currently eating unhealthy, the next day they just want to change to having salad and chicken breast. Guess what? Yes, they can do it for maybe one week. The second week, trust me, they will start going back to their old eating patterns because changes do not happen overnight. It happens over time. So when it comes to fitness and health, it's the same thing. You can't expect change to happen overnight. So you can't expect to change and enjoy eating salad or really healthy food overnight. It has to be a gradual introduction into your lifestyle. So for instance, if you like your fried chicken, by all means, I'm not saying don't eat it. I'm saying eat it, but in moderation. And start to introduce grilled chicken and things like that to your diet. So it's a gradual change. Okay, but some people believe that, I mean, when you want to make a change, you have to really kind of be extreme and, and just cut everything out because if you do have that taste of real chicken or the ice cream or like a cheat day, we have mm -hmm. like a once a week mm -hmm. cheat day, whatever, that that will make them fall fall off the wagon, so to speak. I mean, is that... I I, I think it really comes down to willpower and the thing is with willpower it's a constant battle, it's a yes. constant challenge, correct? Yes. So I like to follow the concept of 80-20%. So 80% eat healthy, 20% allow yourself to have your cheat days, your cheat meals, allow yourself to indulge in something you enjoy. Exactly. I do that, that as well and that keeps me in balance, in check and I feel healthy. Right. Although I, I do have my cheat meals. Yes, but it's okay yes. because I know that 80% of the time I'm having wholesome food. 
we have to choose. Right, okay. So how do we set aside time? I mean, it goes back to motivation as well. Correct. Um, how, and the willpower, like, do you need to wake up at 6.30 in the morning to do your workout oh, before yep. you go to work? <laughs> how, how do you balance that? What's your best advice? Um, one of the most common questions I get asked is, what is the best time to work out? Is it the morning or is it the evening and things like that? My answer to that question when it comes to time and workout time is find the time where it suits your schedule best. So rather than trying to be a morning person, if you're not a morning person, don't do that. If you're more of an evening person, then work out in the evening. Look at your schedule, look at what is the best time that you can fit in, let's say, a 30 minutes workout. If it's not the morning because you're rushing to work, you know, you have too much going on in the morning, then do it after work. If yes, you have more time in the morning, then do it in the morning. Right. And should they like stick to that schedule? Should it be something that they should stick to all the time? Or? I would say yes. I wouldn't say stick to the schedule, but be realistic. Let's say your schedule is really packed and you say, you know what, honestly, I can only fit in three times a week. Then let's start with that. Let's start with three times a week. And let's be consistent with three times a week and slowly build up to four times or maybe five times. Right. Or maybe if you're someone that says, you know what, I can actually fit in five times a week, but I, I can only really do 20 minutes. That's fine. The key here is consistency with whatever you do. You want to be realistic. Look at your schedule, look at your um, sort of like what's going on in your life and see how you can fit it right. in. Yeah. Okay, when we talk about motivation in fitness, um, I mean, I know that... I need to see some sort of results or something that mm -hmm. will um, further motivate me Correct. to go to the gym again because it's not easy. Now I know I do go to the gym, but it's you know some weeks you just say I'm tired of this. I'm tired of having to work out all the time. So unless I see some sort of progress or something that I need to work towards. So what is the tools that you can help like someone who's just starting on a, on a fitness goal? Yeah. Like um, do they need to monitor their progress every week or two weeks or? I definitely do agree that it is good and beneficial for us to monitor our progress. Right. So one of the really easy ways to monitor it, it is obviously weight. But weight is not the most accurate yes. way to monitor it. Yes. Because it fluctuates based on um, if you lack of sleep, you might feel bloated, there will be water retention and things like that. Yes. So besides monitoring it through weight and weighing yourself, the best way is to see how you fit in your clothes, how you feel. So for me, I have like a, I like to call it like a, a weight range. So I like to keep my weight personally between let's say um, 49 to 52. If ever I go above 52 for my weight and height, that's like an alarm there. You know, it, do something about it. You're going way beyond your weight. Right. So it's good to have a weight range for people as well. I believe in keeping like a weight range and that will sort of like keep you accountable to yourself, your well-being. Okay, just going back really quickly to um, to one of the questions, like if it's uh, for say um, a mother that wants to lose her the baby baby weight, yeah, or someone that's um, quite overweight and they need they want to sort of um, lose a certain amount of weight, and I think in order for them to do that, if they've tried doing a diet plan that is, as you say, maybe 80% strict and 20% not, but it's not worked for them, because mm -hmm. I know some friends who have actually gone on a plan. Plan mm -hmm. that is so rigid and precise mm -hmm. like absolutely no carbohydrates and you know everyday exercise so very very tight discipline would you uh, recommend something like that for certain type of people personally I would not recommend a really rigid or really structured plan because I feel that Everybody is different. You can't give one same plan yes. to let's say 20 different people and expect 20 people to follow that plan and see the same results. It will not work that way. Okay. I always believe that it has to fit into your lifestyle. Okay. So let's say if you can't cook three meals a day because it's not realistic. You can only cook, you can only prep breakfast and maybe dinner. So it's okay. Eat out for lunch, but see how can you make healthier options. So yes, you can take a plan, but I would always recommend adapting it to your lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. And also, if it is a bit more flexible, that it will be more long term. The exactly. chances of you sticking yeah. to it will be more long term. And it's a lifestyle that you want to create, not just a oh, two months plan. And after two months, you're like, oh, where do I start again? How do right. I start again? Right. So I think yeah. what Joanna's trying to say is that um, basically it is more like a lifestyle, Correct. healthy um, way of life, Correct. rather than 
something that is just going to be really great for three months and then you fall out, which happens to a lot of people. And I think one of the really important things is to get educated, educate yourself about food, about fitness, about health. I think the trouble is that a lot of people don't really see the education side of things. They just want a plan, they just want a fitness plan, they just want to follow blindly and expect to see results and then they do not know how to um, maintain themselves basically. Yes. So for me it's really important that you yourself get educated. Absolutely. Find out why am I eating this way? Why should I eat this way? Why should I work out this way? Yeah. Why should I work these muscles? What is the benefits I'm getting? Yeah. Be curious, ask yourself questions and do a little bit of research. Those research, those information will help you long term. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because there are so many diet plans out there. Right. So many health plans. You know, everyone's saying this is the latest fad, this is what you should do. So yeah, so if you know um, and research yeah. it yourself, then it'll be able to help you better. Fantastic. And, and you really understand your body yourself. Nobody else can understand your body better than you. Right. So listen to your body, look into that, educate yourself, and then you will be able to treat your body better. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that has really helped all of us. I mean, I, I've learned quite a bit from just talking to you. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. So, are we feeling vibrant and young? I know I am. We'll see you again next week on Sunrise to Health. In the meantime, healthy body, healthy mind. Bye.